President, Your Excellency, if you may please approach. My name is Machoko Mr. Sajan, appearing together with co-agent, Ms. Babili Reddy Manamuri, and assisted by Chekho Council, Mr. Makuma Ephraim Titus. And together, we are, we are representing the respondent, the Vedan Kingdom of Bavaria, in the matter concerning the Sudan referendum. Your Excellency, we have been granted 45 minutes of this honorable court time. And this court has also seen, has also um, appointed us four extra minutes. And therefore, I will use 24 minutes to respond to the applicant submissions on issue one and issue two. And co-agent will use 23 minutes to respond to issue, two, issue three and issue four. And we reserve two minutes to some rebuttal. Your Excellency, with regards to the facts giving rise to the present dispute, I proceed to clarify on certain facts as well as as well as submit on facts omitted, omitted by the applicants. In asserting that, the applicant states, well aware of the fact that Mrs. Emma Waters is a wife of a diplomat, proceeded to arrest and detain her, and in the process of doing so, acquired documents illegally from her previous. With regards to issue to your excellency, your excellencies, the applicants have concealed the fact that they carried out a criminal investigation that revealed that SAP was running the lunar continent, and this is clearly evident from paragraph 35, sorry, paragraph 37 of the company. With regards to issue 3, Your Excellency, Your Excellency, we submit that the applicant state suspended Professor Hanlan's panel account in an unlawful manner, in instance curtailing his right to freedom of expression. And lastly, with regards to issue 4, that concerns Operation Moonstone, we submit that it had an extraterritorial impact on the state of Bavaria, therefore violating our sovereignty. Your Excellency, it's upon these facts that we raise responses to the claims they make in the present dispute. Unless guided otherwise, I proceed to respond to the applicant's submissions on issue one. Your Excellency, issue one concerns the admissibility of documents acquired illegally for Mrs. Emma Walters' briefcase, as well as attached to May Before issue one, uh, the respondents filed what in essence would qualify as a counterclaim. Would you elucidate this court on the premise of the legality of such counterclaim? Thank you for the clarification, Your Excellency. The counterclaim, the, the counterclaim is with regards to issue number three that concerns the violation of Professor Hanlan's account. And we submit that the state of Ontario violated its international law obligation under the International Covenant on Economic, sorry, on Civil and Political Rights to afford Professor Hanlon this right freedom of expression. And as such, we proceed, um, parents per tree, um, in fighting for this right to freedom of expression. The excellence with regards to the first test. This Honorable Court, under Article 36 of its statute, has the jurisdiction to interpret conventions and treaties as binding between states. Your Excellency, the applicant state is party to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And as such, we submit that they violated their international law obligation to accord Professor Anna his right to freedom of expression when they unlawfully sustained his panel account. Your Excellency, I now proceed to respond to the applicant's submission in issue one. Issue one concerns documents acquired illegally from the search of Mrs. Emma Walters' briefcase as well as the 30th Mary, as well as the 30th May recordings. Your Excellency, the applicants seem to rely on the free admissibility framework that this court employs in admitting evidence, as well as going on to assert that the search of Mrs. Emma Waters' briefcase was legal. However, we submit to the contrary on two substantive grounds. First, that the search of Mrs. Emma Waters' briefcase was illegal and in breach of uh, Atara's obligations under the Vienna Conventions on Diplomatic Relations. And then secondly, that the 30th May recordings relate to a private conciliation meeting between the state of Atara and the state of Rabari. Your Excellencies, with regards to my first ground, Mrs. Emma Walters, as evident from paragraph 35 of the Home is a wife of a diplomat. And by operation of Article 37 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, she's entitled to immunities and privileges. Your Excellencies, as I earlier submitted, the applicant state, as evident from paragraph 45 of the Congo, is party to the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. And as such, it has a treaty obligation to accord her immunities and privileges. 
The excellence of these communities and privileges include inviolability of person as well as inviolability of property. Uh, that is under Article 29 and under, under Article 29 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, as well as Article 31. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt your flow. If I understand issue A properly, then it pertains to diplomatic protection of communities. It pertains to the administration. The procedure that was followed in acquiring this document has a bearing uh, on the admissibility of these documents. This is because um, in acquiring these documents, your Excellency, the African state violated its obligations under the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Your Excellency, we have decided in the channel case and the free zones of Upper Sapori and the district of GX, where we actually admitted evidence that had not been uh, legally acquired. So, how would precedence for that question? We are alive to the fact that this court admitted evidence that was illegally obtained by Britain in the Kofu Channel case. However, Your Excellency, in the Kofu Channel case, Albania did not raise an objection to that admissibility of those, uh, sorry, of that evidence. However, as evident from paragraph, sorry, as evident from the special compromise, that is Article 2, the state of Bavaria is contesting the admissibility of this documents. Then, secondly, Your Excellency, in as much as this court admitted the illegally obtained evidence by Britain, it condemned in the strongest terms what Britain had done, um, referring, referring it uh, to amount to a violation of Albania's sovereignty. This court only fell short of um, creating an express rule that forbids um, admission of illegally obtained evidence. However, in the particular circumstances of this case, sorry, of this case, an opportunity has come before the Sonora Court to once again um, evaluate these circumstances. And we request that this court um, makes, makes it clear once and for all that illegally obtained evidence should not be admissible before the Sonora Court. And this is because Your Excellency, states should not be allowed to take advantage of their own doing. So, and so do you dismiss that? The um, Yes, they cannot uh, corroborate this evidence. So therefore, your excellency, submit that they are, these documents cannot be relied upon. However, but reliability arises from a document affirming the contents of the legislation. Documents are not related or material value. However, in um, expounding on this assertion, that leads me to my submission in issue two. We submit that those documents do not in any way prove that um, that the state of Bavaria had control over SAD that was running the Muna And secondly, they do not in any way prove that the financial contributions made by Bavaria to the SAD or SID violate any international law obligation. But in expounding on this assertion, on this um, assertion of excellency, I beg um, that I expound on it further in submitting on issue two. We are alive to the fact that this court has um, free uh, discretionary power in assessing the uh, probative value of evidence. Therefore, if this court finds that this, this evidence is reliable, we still submit that this evidence does not prove any breach of international law by your father. Thank you, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, the applicant seek, sorry, the applicant submit that this briefcase was um, a diplomatic bar. However, we submit to the contract in reliance on Article 27 of the Vienna Convention on, the, on Diplomatic Relations, which says that the Vienna, sorry, that a diplomatic bar has, um, okay, Your Excellencies, in expounding in Article 27 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, the International Law Commission needs commentaries on this specific provision. Observe that um, a diplomatic bag has, um, okay, it, it is identified in a certain way. Uh, I beg to refer this honorable court to paragraph 35 of the that reveals that this was merely a briefcase in possession. Mrs. Emma Walter. However, under Article 31, Paragraph 2, as well as Article 36 of the Vienna Convention, this property is still covered by the immunity, and therefore the African state had an obligation not to violate, sorry, yes, not to violate uh, the Vienna Convention by touching that property. Simply because it was in the possession of someone that had just committed a traffic Much of that is. And the applicant said, I did it. No responsibility is a creature of law. 
Your Excellency, um, immunities do not exonerate Mrs. Emma Waters or the parent that she committed. However, they, they, um, immunities protect Mrs. Emma Waters from the exercise of authority by the applicants. And um, Your Excellency, we still submit that, uh, okay, we still request that this court does not agree with this court. However, in its discretion, if it finds it fit to admit it, then we so pray that um, this court uh, accords it less importance when um, solving this entire case. Because, Your Excellency, this, uh, this evidence was acquired through violating the Vienna Convention and diplomatic relations. Your Excellency, much obliged, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, issue two seeks for this court's determination on whether the financial contributions and cyber operations in connection with the Sudan referendum were consistent with international law. Your Excellency, contrary to the applicant's submission, we submit that these two actions do not give rise to breach of any international law obligation by Ravaria. In fact, in guiding this court to find so, I proceed under two substantial amendments. First, that the financial contributions made by Ravari, the SAP and SIP, were in fact for Sudan independence. And secondly, that the cyber operations carried out by the SAP are not imputed on the state of Ravari. Your Excellency, with regards to my first ground, under Article 1, Paragraph 3 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, as well as the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, Ravaria has an international law obligation to facilitate Sudan in its pursuit for independence. Your Excellency, as evident from the compromise, Sudan has been under foreign domination for the, for the last 59 years. And in 2020, they voted to go in for a referendum so that they determine whether they, they want to become an independent state or not. Your Excellency, the obligation under these two companies, that is the International Company on Civil and Political Rights, as well as the International Company on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, places an obligation on Ravaria to facilitate them in, um, in uh, realizing this obligation. Furthermore, Your Excellency, the General Assembly, in its declaration on friendly relations and cooperation among the states, observed that all states have an obligation um, to facilitate the right to facilitate the realization of the right to self-determination and this can be done through joint and separate action. So uh, when can the acts of an entity be attributed to a state? Much obliged, Your Excellency. That pushes me to my second ground. That in as much as we finance the SAT and SIP, the act the um, the acts of SAT in running the Luna program are not attributable to the state of Ravari. Your Excellency, as the whole essence of Nicaragua, you find in contrast. However, in the Nicaragua case, the court acknowledged the fact that the United States was responsible for financing the contract. However, it observed that the financing did not meet the threshold of effective control. Your Excellency, the court observed that the evidence that was adduced by Nicaragua was not enough to um, reveal the fact that um, the United States had given technical and combatant, sorry, and combatant support to the contract, but also observed that um, the operation of the contract did not reveal strategy that was wholly devised by the United States. In applying that very same principle to the present dispute exercises, we submit that effective control in the present uh, case would entail Ravari giving specific, direct, yeah, specific directions or instructions uh, to the SAP in how they were running the Luna program. However, as evident from paragraph 37 of the program, Ravaria merely approved what SAT was already doing. And we submit that mere approval does not meet the threshold of effective control. And therefore, the acts of the SAT in running the Luna program are not imputable in the state of Ravaria. So, when you look at the run... Um, Your Excellency, we submit that it is distinguishable from the present, um, from the present circumstances. Because that case concerned breach of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations that lies at the heart of, uh, of uh, relations between states. Your Excellency, the court observed that by, uh, by Iran sitting back and doing nothing and allowing the continued um, holding as hostage of the diplomatic and consular staff of uh, the United States, 
had so each other, so their acts were attributable to the state of the family. However, your excellency, with regards to this particular incident, this relates to a cyber operation. So, Council, just to ask one more question. However, to just clarify on the facts, your excellencies, the SAB headquarters were in Antara territory, and it is from Antara that they were running the Muda Your excellencies, those activities were not carried out in the state of the country. And this is further proof that we actually did not have control um, of SAB in running the Muda So, uh, would we, as a progressive court, moving in tandem with contemporary technological standards, is sufficient to deal with uh, cyber attacks. Yes, the reason is I submit that the law as it is is sufficient to um, address the law on cyber attacks. Because your excellency, attribution is a matter of law. And merely creating factual acts is not sufficient um, to attribute uh, acts of an independent actor or to the state. Therefore, your excellency, we request that this court does not go as and that uphold it as it was done. Before you take leave of the floor, you, you fail to ask for extra time. So I'll ask you this question to take leave. Give me state practice, current and contemporary, about cyber intervention in tool the sovereign affairs. The current state practice on cyber operations in another state, uh, I may draw from the example of Russia during the carrying out of the United States of America election that is in uh, Russia. That uh, before you start, I would like you to address us on the facts that are pertinent to your issues. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, my name is Francis Wilhelm, and I will be addressing this morning for what? On issues 3 and 4. Your Excellencies, the issues that pertain to my case, and the facts that pertain to my case, are that Professor Ian Manland um, concerning the state of Professor Ian Manland exhausted all his uh, all rights and uh, remedies available to him in the state of Antra, wherein he had a hearing before the suspension of his account and even was allowed to appeal. Your Excellency will submit that the just not a dispute of diplomatic relations. This is a matter pertaining to individual human rights, which are in the case of a specialized court. And we submit your excellency that yes, it is true, he might have exhausted remedies in the state of Russia, but that permits him to go to other specialized human rights courts that on what